not believe those mean critics. We just saw Godzilla X Kong, the new empire in IMAX 3D. That's right, in IMAX 3D, but is it any good? We'll talk. Hi, right, how are you doing today? It's Just Jess here. Hope you're having a good day. And today, yes, we just saw the movie Godzilla X Kong The New Empire and we went to go see it in IMAX 3D. But is it worth it in that format? Honestly, absolutely yes. Why? The movie is literally filmed for IMAX. So what does that mean for you as a viewer? You get to experience the extended aspect ratio. So that means you see up to 26% more only in IMAX. And now we're going to jump into IMAX's Instagram official page and as a photo that I put on the screen for you right now, this is what you would get in a sample size if you were to go see this movie in a non-traditional IMAX experience. Now let's bump up the screen size so you can see the full resolution, of course the screen size capabilities of IMAX. Or here's another photo for you below. This is of course the same thing, non-traditional IMAX, but then of course let's expand up the ratio. You do get to see more of the artistry at work and the more experience that you would get in an IMAX theater format. And I'm sorry to say this, if you're not watching a movie that's literally filmed for IMAX in a non IMAX traditional theater, then I'm so sorry to say this, but you're probably not getting your money's worth and you're not visualizing the full experience of the film that the artist wanted you to see because you're literally missing out screen space in the top and the bottom. Yes, can be granted. You're still getting the most of the experience based on the middle part of it. But still at the end of the day, it's like if you want to go see the movie to its fullest from the camera's point of view, then IMAX is the way to go. This was also the first MonsterVerse film to be part of the film for IMAX program. I think one of the things that's really cool about this film is that it's the first MonsterVerse film to be a part of the Film for IMAX program. Then if you're an IMAX theater, the proprietary sound provides powerful in-depth audio experience. I absolutely felt the vibrations and the sea rubbling when I was watching this movie. Although the 3D for this film, honestly, it still felt gimmicky and darker than I would have liked, so maybe just IMAX would suffice. Godzilla X Kong The New Empire is an action adventure sci-fi sequel from the 2021's Godzilla vs Kong with the same director. It has been three years since the first came out when Godzilla and Kong first grew us on the screen as they battle each other out in 2021. However, a brand new threat starts to emerge and Godzilla and Kong must face a brave new challenge. According to legends, the Scar Ape has a known creature that can devastate and terrorize the Hollow Earth as well as Earth and the human civilization known to man. The entire planet is at stake. Will they be able to separate their differences in just in order to work together to defeat this evil? Find out as we talk about it. I'm gonna be very honest with you guys. Growing up, I never really liked Kong or Godzilla. I just never really got the appeal of it until a few years ago. I saw the first time Godzilla, King of the Monsters, half of it on an airplane to Texas and then on half of it on the screen before I went to go see Godzilla versus Kong, which I also saw that in the same theater, in the same format, which is IMAX and even in the same seat. And also that was the first time doing YouTube for like reviews on this channel. So link below if you wanna see that. That was my first time doing collaboration with Mr. Garza. Let's talk about the show Stopper. So of course, Godzilla and Kong, the huge big titans, are back in full force. But honestly, it feels like more of Kong's story still. Even in the past installment, Godzilla versus Kong, it felt like Kong's story, just inclusion of Godzilla. Although I do gotta say, Godzilla is more incorporated into this one. I just feel like we should get a little bit closer to him. Now, yes, of course, doing various research and interviews, the director said that he wanted to do a sequel, or a, of course, a trequel, to see Godzilla's point of view. So hopefully this movie makes money and is doing very well from what I've known. But it's nice to see that we still get an inclusion of both of them and more of Godzilla's. If you've seen from the trailers, Kong has found this tribe, but it's not what it seems to be. Big Kong, he feels more relatable than the other past installments because maybe it's because he has a young child ape like him that accompanies him throughout the film and changes the course of like what's going on in the overall plot because why would he take this guy under his wing as you've seen from the trailers? I don't see trailers before I go see a movie. I'd see it after just to give you a better comprehensive review and I know a lot of people like to see trailers, but he also changes the way he looks at the tribe and of course how Earth. I'm reviewing this movie as to assume you had past knowledge of the past experience of Godzilla. So that's the way I say Hollow Earth is like the middle part of the Earth. Godzilla looks incredible from the trailers that you've seen, but then when you see this in IMAX, like his pink neon form is amazing because he's juicing up and leveling up for an unknown threat that's happening that he senses during Hollow Earth. He just doesn't know where it is, but he's getting stronger for him to be like attacking or defending the evils at play. There's one scene that I got to talk about with Kong. I thought it was heartwarming when he like reached out his hand and this is multiple times for the kid, for the other apes. And I'm like, dude, that's amazing because some of the things that are going on in this movie, of course, no spoilers, Kong like reaches out his hand 
And like the other apes look at him like, what is this? Like, and it's so cool because Kong is like this titan. He's like, I would say he's alpha, but he also shows dominance in the forms of respect and maturity because when he reaches out his hand, he's like, no, like, yes, I'm bigger than you. I can kick your ass, but we're in this together. And I love that from Kong. Like, that's why he feels so relatable. Not that, of course, I don't want to say he looks like us, but like he's an ape. He has arms and legs. He feels more humans-like in his mannerisms. And he even knows sign language. And that's amazing. I'm like, what? That's awesome. He knows how to communicate, of course, with Gia, which before the movie, I heard inklings and rumors that the human aspect was basically non-existent but honestly yes the human aspect is there but i don't think it takes a back seat like those rumors or speculations or like bigger youtubers or like online articles were saying it as a matter of fact the human aspect is very much alive and is important and overall and narrative part of the story as sometimes the titans can't retrieve this item or whatever i don't want to like ruin it for you but they need the human aspects because something's calling out to them hollow earth and its secrets find that it's calling out to Gia, which is prevalent in the last film as well, and helping out the Titans in what they couldn't do without them. The human aspect is there, and yes, this movie doesn't get the human aspect like Godzilla minus one did, which that movie was amazing because it really captured the human essence of being scared of Godzilla. And here, the humans are helping the Titans out, and as much one of the reasons why they could be able to defeat the unknown threats. One of the things I really liked about this is that Gia's upcoming in the world. Now she's in school, okay? She's struggling to adjust, and she just says, Oh, I don't know, I don't know where I belong, but of course, she doesn't think that she belongs there because after you experience a connection with like G G Kong Kong excuse me how the hell do you go back to school Should, shouldn't she just be like finding her tribe or working for monarch it's like wow dude one thing that I really like and yes this is a human aspect is the connection with the mother and daughter feels like even though it's not as good as Godzilla minus one it is still there and is still prevalent in this part of the film although the human aspect is not as good as Godzilla minus one basically I mean it's there but it's not as good as that other film she's a tremendous actress showing range in her capabilities from last installment because she gets more screen time in this and she is a big reason why she needs to go to hollow earth because something is calling out to her in order for them to tip the tide in titan's favor and this ties into my next point how the humans are actually helping khan by giving him a metal arm and of course a tooth because in the beginning of the movie it's crucial that he is hurting and I, a lot of people are like oh the humans are not supposed to help well i think that's bold because godzilla when he gets a bracelet that means he's connected with the humans more and he can do more with us combined as a human it simultaneously and when he gets the arm in the movie it's amazing because he's like roaring it's like something happens to him and he needs that arm and it's so cool how they like they take care of him because Khan takes care of us and we take care of Khan by like implementing him augmenting him amplifying its effects and of course the unknown threats this has everything you want in a monsterverse movie it's action big beautiful scales upscale titan destructions new enemies new powers the human aspect is there is not as good as Godzilla minus one, but it doesn't take a backseat like those rumors say. It would, like, it's basically non-existent. I mean, it's still there. I can't wait to see what the series, go series goes next, and the director has talked about that he wants to see Godzilla's point of view. Although, you still get a lot of lore exposition and explanation of what's going on. So far, I don't think this has been a great year for movies, unlike last year. Last year was beautiful, but watching this movie in IMAX 3D, the bar isn't very high, but this is already on the list for top 10 best movies of the year. We'll see if anything takes it. I was talking to a beautiful perfect girl and she says this movie was comedic and now that i think about it was it really comedic i mean maybe they had like quickie one-liners and some comedic takes but like i think i was way more focused on the action and of course godzilla and kong and like was it comedic? I don't know. I mean, I'm th I'm talking to her right now. I'm like, I don't know if it's that comedic. I mean, maybe it could be. At the end of the day, I saw this movie in IMAX 3D. I'm giving Godzilla X Kong, The New Empire, uh, just an A. I thought this was a great film, especially in that form. You guys got to remember, I watched this movie in IMAX 3D, so my experience could be different as yours. If you made it to this part of the video, I really appreciate you so much. Maybe consider hitting that like button and turning on notifications so you never miss a video. With that, take care. Bye.